Hi there, welcome to Market Small right here on 18 on Mumbai Centre on Kanviri Gill and it was uh, a disappointing day of trade primarily because we were building the excitement and anticipation of touching 10,000 but from there the market has done a U-turn so maybe the wait uh, lasts a while longer uh, however, uh, in terms of uh, the damage, price damage done today, it was really about ITC and Reliance Industries. So we'll talk about those two trades uh, as we go through the show. In the meantime, uh, a quick roundup of all the headlines that came from the market's desk. Uh, market snapped six-day rally and slipped to day's lows uh, as heavyweights like ITC and Reliance topped the laggard uh, chart. Uh, broader markets fell to day's lows. Uh, and the Sensex nose dived over 300 points. ITC choked on the government's move to hike cigarette sales. The conglomerate suffered its worst drop in over 15 years, reversed all free GST gains as much as 50,000 crores was wiped out uh, in a matter of a few minutes. Brokerages turned wary, said higher sales to impact volumes as well as valuations. In the meantime, Hindustan Unilever's profit jumped 9% in the first quarter, even as volumes remained flat as the switch to DST kept the stockpiles low. Margins expanded 160 basis points, management said they expect a further price reduction. In the meantime, ACC basked in the glory after a strong quarterly show. The cement maker beat street estimates on all counts, backed by healthy volumes. Meanwhile, Ultratech also topped analyst estimates in the first quarter itself. Reliance Industries was among the top draggers. In the index, uh, investors hit the sell button after reports uh, suggested that the Mukesh Ambani led firm may have to shell out a hefty fine in an oil field dispute that went in the favor of the government. Also, BHEL not smart gains in trade. The capital goods firm emerged as the lowest bidder for the mega 11,000 crore rupee order. Our order could be equal to about 10% of its current order book. We make sense of the markets as we always do with uh, voices lined up on the show. Ajay Bagga joins in on the fundamentals and we have uh, Sachidan Uttaker joining us on the technicals as well. The question that we are essentially asking is, will the last mile to 10,000 be difficult for the Nifty? Uh, good evening to both of you. Uh, Sachit Anand, I'll start off with your uh, sense on the charts. Uh, some more delay uh, to mount 10K. Well, uh, good evening. Uh, yes, uh, we have been in a very strong up move. Uh, if you look at the uh, last couple of months, Nifty has been uh, you know, uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, showcasing this particular strength. If you look at the expiry itself, we started uh, at around 9450 and since then the up move has been very strong. We have really not seen any uh, meaningful correction and uh, uh, today uh, we may, may uh, it seems that we may see some consolidation coming uh, in the market. But overall, I think uh, the tra trajectory is clearly on the bullish side so far as 9700 is held on on a, on a closing basis and uh, even if we see a correction that correction could be uh, 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 just a matter of a uh, few weeks but overall I think uh, the market uh, looks very steady it, it is a very strong bull run and we may see 10,000 coming back uh, soon hmm. okay um, Ajay what do you make of uh, you know the caution the market is exercising at higher levels yeah, Tanvir, uh, that would be natural. I think uh, the catalyst was the GST move on tobacco companies. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, ITC had led uh, the, uh, you know, last few days uh, uh, rally in the market. So, uh, it, it was a big contributory factor. But we saw a follow-on selling coming in and especially the way the bank nifty uh, corrected in the last one hour. I think that's a bit of a caution uh, signal for the next few days. But overall, the trend uh, remains positive, liquidity remains high. I think we have still uh, got a few more quarters of uh, good performance by the stock market. All the leading indicators that we look at, uh, which uh, tend to signal uh, uh, some kind of an economic recession and uh, a follow-up, uh, uh, you know, in terms of a stock market correction, both are not uh, really uh, showing uh, anything much. So I would treat it as more an intermediate correction. We will probably see a few more days of uh, 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 downside or sideways market before it uh, resumes the rally. But uh, I think 10,000 is very much on the anvil. It's a matter of time uh, before the market, uh, you know, surmounts that summit. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about um, the one sector which was in focus today. Um, HULs tell us out of numbers. Before that, uh, 
Uh, ITC is the one that got badgered out of shape uh, because of the additional sales charge. Ajay joins us with those stories. Ajay? Well, that's correct. Uh, the newsmaker of the day was ITC. For all the wrong reasons, the tax incidents going higher to pre-GST levels brought the stock crashing down. Uh, the biggest fall seen in over two decades, almost 40,000 crore wiped out of uh, uh, in market cap for ITC. And there was across the board slashing of targets from brokerages uh, for this particular stock. Anywhere between, you talk of CLSA, Credit Suisse, Macquarie, Morgan Stanley, anywhere between 60 rupee to over 100 rupee a share is the kind of price cuts, uh, price target cuts we saw. Brokerage is saying that the volumes will, could, are at risk, the, the decline in volumes could be seen because of a company being forced to hike the prices. Uh, they go on to also say that this was a surprise, a negative surprise. There was a complete U-turn and the market was not prepared for it. And that is the reason uh, the big cut came on um, on this particular stock price. If you look at the intraday price, you would see that there was hardly any attempt to recovery in this particular stock. And uh, for some time, they would you know the pressure could remain because there's a structural shift uh, as far as ITC goes. The tax goes up. They will be forced to hike prices in an environment where price hikes is not very conducive, and hence volume will be impacted. So uh, this was a you know big big wealth erosion happened in this stock today. You see the price increase of the change will vary from state to state. It is not that every, in every state there will be requirement to increase the prices. As per my estimate for something like Maharashtra or the states where the average VAT rate is above say around 30-35% and above, the prices would still be flattish or they will come down. But the states where the VAT rate is lower than that, the prices will need to go up. But on an average, I think uh, they might require to take price increase say by a few percentage points here or there except in the king size and extra large cigarettes. Last year ITC has uh, reported around 2% volume growth and if you look at past few years the volumes of ITC have shrunk by around say 20 odd percent. Now we, if we move slightly away from the GST rates, the other benefits of GST like your uniform pricing, going away with multiple taxes at the state level and all, they are still there. So even if the prices on an average go up by say by a few percentage points, I think it doesn't change the story that drastically. Okay, we, we had not changed our estimates post GST because we were factoring in around 4% volume growth in FY18 and 5% in FY19. And I see no reason as of now to tinker with that. So I believe that the current knee jerk reaction in the stock price is a good entry point because ITC is trading at a huge discount to most of the stocks in the sector. All right. In the meantime, uh, HUL's earnings surprise the street. Uh, let's do a quick review with Mubina first before we take it across to our guests for analysis. Mubina? Well, uh, not bad a set of numbers. There may have been a bit of a disappointment when it comes to volumes, but nevertheless, top line has grown by a good 5% at 9,094 crore rupees. That's inclusive of the excise duty component. We were expecting a growth of just about 2 or 3 odd percent, a bit 13.5% of a jump seen over that 1,979 crore rupees and margins at 23.2%. So there as well, we've seen a, you know, a steady expansion and another 9% growth on the bottom line. So no complaints when it comes to the numbers, the headline numbers. But of course, the other headline number, the under Underlying volume growth has just come flat. That's well, you know, as you can say, zero percent. Now we had an expectation of about one to two percent, but I don't think the street's really going to complain about this because it's a well-known fact that we are in a quarter where transition to GST happened. The management themselves have said that ahead of the GST there was trade sentiment which was cautious. Stock pipelines remained low, so it, you know, pretty much be unsurprising that happened. But in terms of other internals, home care revenues was something that led the growth, five point nine percent growth over there. The margin expanded significantly at 14.7 percent versus 12.4 percent no reason to complain for personal care as well their revenues grew by three and a half percent and it was the laundry segment the mass as well as the premium detergent segment that actually led the growth but good numbers overall for HUL. EBITDA grew 14 percent while EBITDA margins improved 160 bips driven by a strong and comprehensive zero based budgeting program which, implement, which impacted all lines of the PNL. With inflation moderating, cost of goods sold was lower by 75 bips. Profit after tax before exceptional items stood at 1,292 crores, up 15%. And net profit was up 9% at 1,283 crores. 
impacted by a one-time write-back of provision for employee benefits in the base. Looking ahead, in the near term, we expect rural demand to improve gradually and input costs to be stable. Trade stocks will build back to normative levels over the next few months and our focus remains on volume driven growth and improvement in operating margin and our strategy remains unchanged which is competitive, consistent, profitable and responsible growth. All right. Uh Ajay, uh, I know you would not comment stock specific, but you know, without giving a directional call, what do you make of ITC's uh, additional CES charge and HUL stellar numbers? Yep. Yeah, uh, see, overall, uh, Tanvir, what the market is factoring in is uh, that uh, there is a volume growth going ahead with the rural consumption uh, returning. And, uh, you know, the Seventh Pay Commission and other uh, 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 fiscal stimulus are kicking into the economy. So consumption remains a strong team. Uh, market the valuations are not cheap and uh, that is a historical fact. Uh, these companies get rewarded for their very uh, strong ROEs and their growth uh, as well as uh, clean balance sheets uh, with uh, zero leverage. So. Uh, I would say the India consumption theme remains one of the mega trends and uh, these numbers are bearing it out. You know, uh, I was listening to the commentary on your channel and uh, the HUL management were talking about canteen store uh, department, the military, not uh, uh, ordering after June 5th. So you lost out nearly a month of the biggest customer and still you have uh, flat volumes. I think that speaks uh, volumes uh, for the volume. And uh, I would not be so perturbed by the flat volume. I would look at more the margins, uh, which have been better. Uh, we were expecting some amount of uh, pain there on higher commodity and uh, input prices. That has not flown through. So pricing is holding out uh, with uh, consumption, hoping to cover in the next two quarters. I would say FMCG companies are looking good and uh, still they make a compelling uh, investment thesis even at these valuations. Sachidanand, uh, on the charts, HUL as well as ITC? Well, uh, if you look at ITC itself, uh, we saw that uh, the stock uh, was consolidating uh, almost for three years uh, within the band of 260 and 220 on the lower side. And we saw a fresh breakout uh, somewhere uh, in the month of February. And since then, the momentum had been very strong. But if you look at uh, today's action, uh, it has found some support uh, close to the 200-day uh, exponential moving average uh, place somewhere close to 270. But I think the, there is some more uh, bit of pain which is left in the counter and it may just take somewhere close to 265 260 and that that level could be a good level to again uh, you know look at the uh, uh, look at the counter from a buying perspective as far as HUL is concerned I think uh, the uh, the stock has been uh, uh, been a very secular uptrend uh, we saw a breakout somewhere close to 1120 and since then uh, it has really not uh, seen any uh, sharp decline in the counter so I think uh, going forward uh, we expect this particular uh, uh, momentum to continue uh, around 1220 1210 uh, these are the levels uh, that we would be watching out uh, in the coming week. Okay, gentlemen, we'll head into a break right now and we come back full focus on how to portray tomorrow. Welcome back uh, and let's straight uh, go across to my colleague Avant Bash uh, to get a quick perspective on the important earnings that are coming up tomorrow, particularly Havel's Q1. Avant? 
Well, brace yourselves for a steady quarter for Havels. We're expecting a steady set of numbers largely on account of the Lloyds acquisition. That's going to be the key trigger for the standalone earnings this quarter. Profit is seen high by about 16.5% at 169 crore rupees. The top line growth is expected to grow about 40% at 2057 crore rupees. So if you exclude the Lloyds sales, you could have the top line growth dipping by about 2% year on year due to the lower primary sales of the consumer facing products. The underlying growth Though, though does remain a little bit weak, uh, largely on account of the destocking impact on companies such as this due to GST. Margins could see uh, a little bit of a decline at 12% versus 13.6% with the EBITDA seen growing about 24%. Uh, so largely you're expecting a margin contraction due to the lower sales of the better margin products and the consolidation of Lloyd's lower margin business uh, as well. So ex Lloyd, the margins could decline by about 60 basis points as well to 13.1%. In terms of segmental performance, it's the cable segment that's expected to register a 10% growth led by an improvement in copper prices. The lighting segment could grow about 5%. The consumer durable segment is expected to see steady growth of about 15%. And margins across most of the segments though will contract about 50 basis points on account of the negative operating leverage as well as the increase in input costs. Watch out for management commentary on the integration of the consumer durables arm of Lloyd's Electric with itself as well as the GST led impact on the sales and the guidance for FY18. Thanks Avan for that. Uh, Ajay, how are you uh, looking at the earnings uh, quarter thus far when we have had uh, some leaders in the IT pack uh, come out with numbers, Indescent Bank has reported numbers from the private banking space. Uh, too much, uh, uh, sorry, too little has come out for uh, you know uh, a trend analysis to be made. But even so, what's um, your, your feeling about the quarter's earnings? Yeah, as per expectations, uh, Tanvir, uh, nothing uh, very great to write home about. Private sector banks doing well. Uh, we are expecting the housing finance companies and NBFCs to come in with strong numbers. Uh, so, more or less uh, on par uh, as per expectation, uh, nothing much to derail the uh, markets as such in the earnings expectations were low and uh, expect, uh, so far the few numbers that have come out are uh, really following the trend not out of the trend right um, you know before anything else we'll be looking at Havel's numbers tomorrow Sachidanand have you taken a look at the charts there for Havel's Well, uh, uh, if you look at the immediate trend, uh, the stock has been under pressure. Uh, 480, 495 has been a stiff resistance for the stock. And if you look at uh, the overall price movement, it has been oscillating within 450, 490 for uh, quite a lot of time. So we expect uh, this particular level of uh, around 450 to be revisited. Uh, we may see uh, the stock slipping down towards the 200 day moving average somewhere close to 445. So I think uh, the, uh, the overall uh, trend on an immediate basis has been down and we may see some more uh, negativity in the counter. Okay. Uh, I also want to touch upon uh, the point, um, Ajay, that uh, you know you have some of these uh, private banks uh, which have also been tainted uh, with the bad loan problems such as Access Bank and ICICI Bank doing well in an otherwise uh, weak uh, session. Um, how do you look at that pocket uh, in uh, in the process of resolution that we are seeing thus far with a lot of uh, companies being referred to the NCLT for uh, insolvency proceedings? Yeah, Tanvi, there is more upside I would think in the corporate focus uh, private sector banks. Uh, they are well provided, well provisioned and uh, there is more chance of a better recovery than what they have on the books. So, uh, not too much of uh, you know the shocks that could come in the public sector banks if the RBI provisioning norms have to be followed through uh, and there is enough and more time uh, for them to absorb that so I think those are being uh, bought into uh, especially institutional and HNI buying we have been seeing in the corporate uh, focused private sector banks as a contrarian call and uh, that should uh, do well so uh, those uh, should uh, present good numbers, uh, better numbers and uh, there should not be any uh, uh, surprise on the RBI provisioning because they are well provisioned. All right. Uh, on the charts, however, uh, Sachidanand, how is uh, ICICI Bank and Access Bank looking?
Well, if you look at Axis Bank, uh, you know the stock uh, has been uh, you know oscillating within uh, the band of around 525 on the higher side, and the lower uh, lower end of the band is somewhere close to 490. Every time uh, we have seen a, a breakout kind of a situation near to this particular upper end of the band, uh, uh, there has been a failure. So I won't be surprised if uh, the stock again starts moving down towards the, the lower end of the band, which is close to around 500. As far as ICICI Bank is concerned, I think uh, we have already seen a good steady up move. Uh, uh, in this particular counter but uh, follow up buying is something which will be required uh, we have really not seen any uh, negativity in terms of uh, any divergence uh, so far as the oscillators are concerned and I think uh, a fresh breakout about 305 on a sustained basis could pull this particular counter right up to 315 so uh, as far as uh, 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 trading call is concerned I think uh, at this point of time ICICI bank still uh, looks as a better uh, trading play rather than Axis bank right um, before we wrap up, Sachidan, help our viewers with strategies to approach trade tomorrow. Well, we have uh, three uh, trading strategies, uh, two on the buy side and one on the sell side. Uh, if you look at FMCG, uh, uh, Britannia is one particular counter uh, which is uh, uh, looking uh, at a fresh breakout. Uh, we expect uh, this particular stock to uh, witness a breakout and a, and a strong momentum is expected right up to 38.50. A stop loss can be placed at around 36.90. The second buy call is the buy call on Coal India. The stock has been under pressure for almost four years, uh, four months now. It has been already down by almost 25%. Uh, and uh, if you look at the weekly scale, uh, we are seeing that uh, there's a positive divergence which is uh, you know getting uh, occurred uh, on the RSI. Uh, if you look at even today's formation, uh, again a bullish uh, Rami kind of a pattern is reiterating this particular fact. So very good reward to this ratio, keeping a stop loss close to 242. We expect. Uh, a move right up to 260 and the third call is a sell call on Ashok Leland we have already seen a good stellar move in this particular counter the stock is almost uh, clo trading close to its uh, life highs but if you look at today's price activity we are uh, we have clearly seen a very uh, strong bearish candle getting occurred so engulfing bearish kind of a pattern along with the negative divergence of the daily scale and uh, it is a compelling thing to create short positions 108.5 should be the stop loss for the trade and we expect the stock to again uh, uh, push lower towards 100 levels. Okay, gentlemen, we leave it at that. Thanks very much for taking out the time to speak with us today. Really appreciate your insights and thoughts. Uh, with that, we come to the end of this edition of uh, Markets uh, tomorrow. Uh, catch you with the markets as always at morning 8 a.m.